Welcome back to the land of unpopular opinions and today I'll be doing the, I'm not even sure what to call it, my bookish preferences tag. This was a video basically created like a few days ago by Murphy up here, who I like to watch, who doesn't. And it seemed like a very fun tag to do, so nothing else to explain, let's just get into it. The first question is, what's your favorite perspective to read a book in? And for that, I'm going to have to say third person. I don't remember the last time that I actually read first person. But yeah, third person all the way. I used to read only in first person, actually, when I was reading like really, really young adult. But I can't imagine reading a book that's in first person now. It's just weird. I write fan fiction, like fiction for me. I write in first person. It doesn't seem natural. I would never publish that, but my book and all the books that I like to read are definitely third person. So not a lengthy answer in that one. It just feels more natural. I don't know why. The next question is, what's your favorite reading format and rank them? And the formats are basically paperback, hardback, audiobook, and ebook. And for that, it's pretty clear, some people could be angry, but it's pretty clear for me. Basically, first we have paperbacks, but not just any paperbacks, floppy paperbacks, because they are definitely the best reading type. And I will pick up examples for this prompt in particular. Now, for example, this edition of Baron the Nightingale is this type of floppy paperback. That's superior to anything, number one. Then it will be hardcover because these types of books that are like easy to read and compact are really, really preferable to stiff paperbacks. You have to literally just crack so you can read them like a normal person. <laughs> then it will be mass market or just stiff paperbacks because physical reading is the top for me. That's the only thing not like you can consider but that's the only thing that I consider reading for me in general if if like it doesn't exist in physical form yeah I'll read it some other way but it's always takes precedence that's the only way I will want to read a book it just depends on which format so then it comes stiff paperbacks which is let me find an example of a stiff paperback we've got Red Seas Under Red Skies, like to read it properly, you have to really break it. Otherwise you have to squint at the letters that are in the middle of the page. Then after that, it will be audiobook because I would never ever pick up a book as an audiobook because I want to read it. I will pick it up as an audiobook if it's a narrator that I want to listen to. <laughs> like I've got so many audiobooks because it's Richard Armitage or Benedict Cumberbatch or Tom Hiddleston but because it's them and I want to listen to them and their performance I don't even care what the book is. And the only book that I actually got because I thought that's the way I could get through it was 1984 and for example for example Last Name Sara. Those two are probably the only audiobooks that I only read as audiobooks and not because of the narrator but because of the experience. I think of that as a performance. I don't read it for the book I read it pretty much for the performance. <laughs> So that's why it's so low on my list. And then ebooks. I absolutely hate them. If I can avoid them, I will never ever read an ebook. Sorry, I dropped something. I will, yeah, just never. I don't want to look at a screen when I'm reading. Reading is pretty much the only activity where I don't have to look at a screen. I will read it very rarely. For example, I got the box set, like the complete Anne of Green Gables books on ebooks because it was like two and a half dollars. So I got it. I want to see how many of the books are good, but I've been reading rarely because it's an ebook. I don't like I don't like the experience. I did get it so I could see which I could buy as physical books because the box set is expensive and I don't want to buy all of them if some of them suck. That's the only reason, but I usually never ever read ebooks. So this was a lengthy explanation, but yeah, that's my personal preference in regards to formats. The next question is, do you prefer character or plot focused book? And for that, I'm going to have to say both. I rarely, rarely liked a book if it was just characters with no plot 
or the other way around it has to be a combination of both like i need to be interested in the plot but also get attached to the characters but if i had to pick i would say characters because if i don't like the plot as much but i am emotionally attached to some of the people i more i'm more likely to read it yeah in that case characters but i need a combination of both definitely but characters for example, it can't be the other way around for me because I'm never ever interested in a book if I'm not attached to at least one character. That just wouldn't work. So yeah, I guess character preference. I'm going to put these two in one clip because I don't have that mm, that big of an opinion, which is do you care about prose and how introspective do you like your characters characters to be? I care about prose, but it's not important to me. Like, there are more tedious writing styles and more beautiful writing styles, but I don't care about it that much. <laughs> I really don't. Like, for example, a random example, but two books with very different writing styles. One is very simple and one is very, very, very flowery. We have Strange the Dreamer and we have Will of Time. One of them is a favorite and one of them is a major disappointment and I actually like flowery writing. So, if you know, you know. It's not important but if I love a book and it has a lovely writing style I appreciate that so much but it's really not something that's going to make me stop or give up the book and as for introspective I'm not really sure what to say here because I'm trying to think of an example where someone's less and more introspective I guess I like when they're more introspective I like actually knowing what's going on inside people's heads but if it's just a, like a character study book I wouldn't be interested yeah like actually only being in one character's head so no i'm not sure how to answer this one which is why i put it together with the last prompt i'm not sure i guess i like it to be more introspective but not too much the next one is how do you like your relationships and platonic my answer would be platonic there is a 99 percent chance that i will hate the romance <laughs> The list of romances and books that I like is very short. I could probably count it on one hand. So, platonic. I am trash for a found family or family or friendship or brotherhood or sisterhood centered books. Trash for it. Absolute trash. I will read it immediately if it has one of those. But... Yeah, I can only stand romance when it's not romance-centered. I can't care if the point of the entire thing is a romance. So definitely platonic. I like my relationships platonic, but if they have to be romantic, then definitely a side plot. Maybe just me. I know a lot of people like romance, but I like romance too sometimes. I mean, I write fiction about me with my favorite characters. But that's also not the same because I'm imagining myself with them. I'm not reading about them with, in a romance with someone else. So yeah, platonic. Platonic is my answer for this. Next one is, do you like a lot of descriptions? And that's a very tricky slope for me because I like a lot of descriptions. I love it. Even as a writer, I love <laughs> describing stuff. There can be a point when it's too much. Again, let me reference Jordan. There are certain times when you're just like, please stop. Please just stop describing every detail of this scene. Thank you. But it depends on what descriptions also. Like architecture always kills me. Kills me. I just skip immediately. But if it's like woods or like anything describing nature or stars or like the sun just talk as much as you want so i guess it's a preference thing it depends on what you're describing but in general i like more descriptions than not but definitely a moderation standalones or series now this one i believe is evident series all day every day i can't get invested in a standalone that's because i mostly read fantasy probably and you can't get invested in a fantasy standalone in my opinion not insulting you but I can't get invested in a standalone if it's one book and there's an ending I just I don't care as much 
I need to feel like I've gone through a journey. I mean, I read a 14 book series, 15 actually. Yeah, if I can get invested and feel like I've gone through a journey, I don't care. I really don't. I have a couple standalones, but just doesn't hit the same. <laughs> Obviously for other genres, it's strange. I feel like for all genres, but fantasy and fantasy, I like standalones. I don't like series where it's like romance drawn out or crime drawn out, but for fantasy, it has to be a series has to. The next two are going to be bundled together again. And that's single or multiple points of view. I don't have a preference. I don't really have a preference. But I want to say multiple because I like getting interested in more than one character. Usually when I get interested in one character, they're the ones that are going to suffer the most. So yes, please give me multiple options to obsess over. Multiple points of view, definitely. And then the last question is an interesting one. Do you prefer a strong start, middle, or finish? And I am going to come right out and say it. If you pick anything but finish, you're wrong. Because there's nothing worse than liking a book and it having a bad ending. If it has a bad ending, I'm probably going to think negatively of the rest. Now let me just break it down. If it's a good start and the rest is mediocre or bad, it sucks because I expected more. If it's a great middle, but the beginning was rough and the ending was terrible, never going to think about the book again. But if the beginning and middle were mediocre and the ending is great, I'm going to get the assurance that it actually ends well. Because it's the toughest thing to do. Endings. Almost no one can do this. I will go back. And because the ending is good. The other two sections will be better. Because I already know it's heading to a satisfying conclusion. You're simply wrong if you say anything else. <laughs> you can't like a book or a series if the ending is bad. That's like the, the key part of everything. No one is going to watch Game of Thrones again because the ending sucks. No one, absolutely no one. The ending ruins everything for you. So finish. The finish needs to be strong than everything else. Just go along with that. And that is all I have to say on the subject. That is it for the tag. I hope it was entertaining to watch. It had some interesting questions, which I wanted to talk about. That's why I did the tag immediately after I watched her do it. And thank you, Murphy, for the great prompts. You will never see this, but still thank you. And let me know what your answers to this would be. I'm actually interested. And if you agree with me or, or disagree, that's sometimes even more interesting to see. But hope you had fun. I will see you in the next video.